Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this is a full tutorial of how to paint this summer truck. So I am doing this on 11 by 14 inch canvas. And the first thing I'm gonna do is define my horizon line. That's where the sky ends and that ocean is going to appear. I'm going to mark approximately four and a quarter inches down and you can measure that exact amount or you can kind of estimate that amount. Then I'm going to use some regular masking tape to mask off that line because when I paint my sky I want a nice crisp horizon line. I'm going to start with a three quarter inch flat brush and the two colors on my palette are light blue permanent and titanium white. So I'm going to do a gradient blend in the sky. It is going to start out with just the light blue permanent using the full width of the brush go all the way across the canvas and cover about half of the area up in the sky. Okay, um, apply a generous amount, um, not too much, not too little, just enough to um, because we're going to be blending that white in there. So we want it we want to work kind of fast to keep it kind of wet so we can get that white to blend up in there. Um, when I add my white, um, I don't rinse the brush, so just add a little bit of white to your brush. Start below the light blue permanent and gently blend up so that that white blends into the light blue permanent. And this is wet on wet blending because that light blue color is still wet on the canvas. And you want, you're going to need to brush over it several times to really get it to blend. Of course, you can paint the sides of your canvas as well. Um, so you just keep working the colors in the sky, keep blending until you have a nice transition of light blue that goes all the way to the horizon into a very uh, light blue color. And as I'm doing this, I'm painting the sides and blending it the same way with the light blue blending into the light uh, white color. Okay, so when we're done with the sky, we're going to rinse off our brush. So get all that light blue and white off your brush and tap it dry. We're going to load our palette with ultra marine blue. And before we start working on that ocean, I'm going to measure an area on the bottom. So this line is about two and three quarter inches from the bottom. And this is the line where that gravel um, of the, um, so the truck is on a slab of pavement. So that's where that line is. And so this area between the horizon line and that line we drew, that's going to be all ocean. And notice that I moved my tape to above the horizon line. You can decide to do this or you could not decide to do this. That blue is a little bit wet. Um, it actually turned out fine doing it this way, but just be really careful when you're doing that, especially if that paint is still wet underneath. But we're going to start with the ultramarine blue and that three quarter wash brush. And I'm going to paint a small area of that ultramarine blue. Okay, so I'm going to go down maybe an inch, an inch and a half. And this ocean is actually going to be another gradient blend. So it's going to be very dark in the background um, and the f closer to the horizon line. And the ocean water is actually going to get lighter as we go uh, towards the bottom of the line that we drew. So after you go down about an inch and a half, don't rinse your brush. Add the light blue permanent and start below the blue the darker blue and blend up gently of um, this light blue permanent is actually kind of a strong color because it has a, a white in the base of it but anyway um it's an opaque color so it'll take over that ultramarine blue very fast you just want to blend it in very gently add just a little bit to the tip of your brush and gently brush upwards to blend it into that dark blue so we don't lose that dark blue um, in the very background and that it blends nicely okay so we're going to go down um, pretty much almost all the way down to that line with this light blue color and then i'm going to go ahead and pull that tape off very gently and 
it worked beautifully and we have a nice crisp horizon line and so I'm just going to continue adding that light blue and I'm going to go almost all the way to that line but leave a little bit of a gap uh, where that line is and it's okay that I still have that dark blue on my brush it's kind of adding some interesting texture into the water with that dark blue streak but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wipe my brush on my palette to kind of wipe off that excess paint and I'm going to add titanium white to my brush. So we're going to gently blend that titanium white on the bottom where that light blue is and I'm going to blend it back up into the water so that that white um, turns into a very light blue right at the bottom area and um, gently blend that white all the way back up. So I went all the way back where that dark blue is too and um, just it gives it a little bit of a color variation in there. And then I'm gonna go in and kind of spread the paint on the sides as well. So when I do the sides, I'm not really particular about making sure everything's blended correctly. I just extend the color and kind of estimate uh, what that color would look like on the side. But it is kind of nice to just extend the paint on the side and makes it look um, more interesting, especially when you have the canvas hanging up on the wall. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the um, bottom area that is still white and that is a pavement area that our truck is going to be situated on. I'm going to make the color gray. So this is kind of a light to medium color gray. Uh, I took a big chunk of white on my palette and I grabbed a tiny bit of black on my corner, mixed it together. And I'm just going to use my three quarter wash brush to fill in this entire area with that gray. No blending required in this step. And while I am finishing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about my traceable. So uh, when you're done with this step, you're going to need to wait for your painting to dry completely before transferring the traceable onto the canvas, or you can draw the truck yourself if that's what you want to do. So here's my traceable. And I transferred this using a sheet of graphite paper placed underneath the truck, shiny side down, and I just took a pencil and traced it and the drawing transferred completely to the canvas. Um, the position of the truck, the bottom of the wheels are exactly in the center of the pavement area. So that's where I aligned my truck. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these bushes that are sort of on the left and the right side of our truck. I'm loading my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and Brilliant Yellow Green. I'm also freshening up some titanium white, although I won't use the titanium white right away. I'm going to make a swab of Q-tips. So this is about five Q-tips that I'm making a bundle together and I'm using a rubber band to kind of hold it all together. I'm going to use this Q-tip bundle as a way to paint these bushes. So I'm starting with that hooker's green. We're going to call it dark green and I'm going to just stamp it. So I just loaded the, the tips of those Q-tips with the green and it's stamping to create this texture of the bush and I'm just gonna keep stamping that base layer of the bush. Um, this is only behind the truck, so I'm not gonna paint over the truck. It's, it's gonna look like it's going behind it, but it's not overlapping the truck. This bush is kind of going diagonal upwards. So you wanna fill that in completely. Keep stamping your bundle of Q-tips until you get a pretty solid, it doesn't have to be 100% solid. You can have some of that ocean still showing through. But what we really want is that texture um, that's created from the little Q-tips. And so this bush is going to be a little bit higher than the, the one on the right, um, but it's still gonna look kind of diagonal and it's still gonna go behind the truck. So I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna paint over that truck at all. When you load your Q-tips, you wanna make sure that you don't overload. So you can see what I do. I tap it out on the palette a little bit so some of that excess paint gets off of it and it's not too chunky and clumpy when you tap it and it creates better texture when it doesn't have way too much paint on it. So I'm just gonna keep stamping my little texture in my bush 
And then I'm going to kind of wipe off some of that excess dark green and add the lighter green in there. So this is going to create some nice pretty color um, variation. I'm just going to tap that light green and let it blend on the canvas. It's going to kind of do its own thing. Um, kind of relinquish control here with that light green, letting it blend with the dark green and um, kind of um, not really controlling what it's doing here. Yours is going to look different from mine, of course, and just letting it blend. Of course, we know that dark green is really wet, so it may be kind of hard to blend, but we what we want is that texture and that color variation. Okay. So we're going to let this dry. At the very end of this painting, I ended up doing a little bit more of another layer of color on there, but for now it's too saturated to do anything to. Next is the fun part. We get to actually paint the truck. Um, now is a good time to rinse that water out. Make sure you have some nice clear water in there. Uh, we're going to use a 12 bright brush for this. On my palette, I have, um, this is Pyrol Red. Um, there's cad orange hue on there and there's that white. So I'm going to load my brush in the, the Pyrol Red. I'm going to load my corner in that orange and I'm actually going to kind of just blend that red and orange together to make a red orange color. Okay, so you have red orange on your brush and then I dip the corner in white. Okay, so red orange on your brush, dip the corner in white. Um, and uh, when I do these truck paintings, this is my fifth truck, pa truck painting that I've done. Uh, I like to start on the fenders, the, the um, half donut shape shapes that are above the wheels. And I like to do that white on the corner and I'm just gonna let that blend there and I'm gonna paint the uh, fender around. This is just kind of a base color. We want the colors to kind of blend a little bit. Um, but obviously this is the first color. We can always go back and blend it, uh, add some more colors in there later. So we have red, orange, we have white, and we're letting the colors blend themselves. And I'm painting that shape in. And if this is not your first truck painting, if you've done my other truck paintings, um, it's the exact same technique, the exact same order I'm painting it. Um, only difference is it's reddish orange color instead of teal or red or dark blue or teal. I did another one that was kind of a, a light blue color, the spring truck. So it's the exact same technique. Um, if this is your first truck painting, uh, you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. But um, since the truck is reddish orange, we want to use that white to kind of create some color variation in there. So I'm loading it in different amounts of the, um, the orange, but then I'm loading the corner of my brush in the white and just painting it and letting it blend on the canvas here so that we get some nice um so it's not just that solid orange color it's got some highlight in there automatically okay so next thing we want to do is we want to go in and paint the body of the truck and this time i loaded my brush in more of the pyrol red to get it to look darker and if you can see what's happening, it's right there next to that uh, fender that I painted. The fender's standing out because it's a lighter color. It has some white in it. So this red in here is actually making it look darker. So the point is that I want to create some contrast in my truck. So some areas are going to be lighter. Some areas are going to be darker. And it's not all the same solid color. Okay. And then, um, so I... You can see what's happening here. I added a little bit more white in there. You can see the the hood of the um, truck is a little bit lighter. It could, looks like a different color than that fender. It stands out. And the direction of my stroke is going in the direction of the shape that I'm filling in. So if I'm going curved around that fender or I'm going straight under the bed, so you just want to keep following the direction of the shape. And I know this is going a little bit too fast, and especially if this is your first truck painting that I've that you've done of of my, my trucks, um, 
I would recommend that if this is too fast, um, look at my teal pumpkin truck because I go through that a little bit slower in that tutorial, but it's an exact same technique. So you might wanna check that out if you wanted to get a little bit more in depth of what's happening here with the blending and the colors. Um, so what I'm doing right here is I'm painting around the window. I don't wanna cover the window and I haven't color covered the door yet. So I went around that door too. Um, the window is going to be um, some white, so I don't wanna cover over the window. Um, speaking of coverage, so we have this reddish and orange color. It's pretty opaque, although it's a little bit of that blue still showing through. Um, if that's the case, you can go back over with a second coat so that you have some better coverage. Um, I did go back a little bit later with some more coats of the paint. But for the most part, it's doing some okay coverage against that blue water. So what I'm doing here is I'm painting the door and I added way more white to that door just to give it that sort of rusted look, rustic look. So it's the same sort of reddish orange color, but I added a, a more white to my brush. I'm outlining it with the tip of my brush, but on the inner parts, I'm painting up and down strokes. And I'm letting those colors sort of blend. So we have kind of a streaky look of that reddish orange color with the white and I'm painting up and down. It kind of gives it that rusted look. And the fact that this door is lighter in color, it makes it stand out. And that's what we want. We don't want everything to be the same exact solid color because then nothing will stand out. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the tip of my brush to sort of outline that area. Um, if you needed to switch to a smaller brush, because um, it's for smaller areas, you can do that. Uh, you don't have to use that 12 bright brush if you feel more comfortable with a different one. You can still do the same kind of technique. I am gonna take that same sort of white um, that I did with the door. I'm gonna add it to my fenders because I love how it kind of makes it pop. You can see what's happening there with adding that little bit of white to the brush, giving it that same sort of tone that the truck door has, it makes those fenders sort of stand out. I think this one turned too, too light, so I'm adding a little bit more orange in there. Um, but for the most part, I wanna keep the body sort of darker than the fenders in the door so that everything stands out nicely. And I'm just gonna keep going um, and filling up my truck, making sure everything has some nice coverage, um, making sure everything is blended nicely. Just um, keep in mind that the more you keep adding more paint to it, the more likely it's just gonna end up being the same color. So you wanna kind of um, let some things be a little bit unblended. And um, so I'm adding, kind of defining that truck bed area a little bit more. I'm using that tip of my brush for those smaller areas. And then I'm just gonna add another coat of paint to my door and my fenders. I really like the look of that streaky white in there. It makes it look nice and rustic. Okay. Um, for the window, you want to completely rinse your brush off. You didn't see that happen, but if you look at my water, you can see how red my water is. I completely rinsed my 12 bright brush and I am going to do a dry brush style to the window. Dry brush means I don't have a lot of paint on my brush or water. I only dipped a teeny tiny bit of white in there. In fact, too much white, um, just brush it off on your palette or wipe it off so you only have a little bit of white in there. And I'm doing vertical streaks, but I can also um, use the tip of my brush to sort of outline the inner part of the window and define the window. But for the most part, we wanna do up and down streaks using the full width of the brush. And that effect allows us to see some of that ocean and that horizon line right through that window. Um, your lining of the truck may not show the horizon line or the blue sky, depending on where you trace your truck. So don't freak out if you're not seeing the exact same thing through the window at this point, that is okay. Nothing wrong with that. Your truck is going to be fine. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. Don't wanna, you don't wanna make it solid white, but just enough so where you can still see uh, through that window. Next, we're gonna paint the tires and we are going to switch to the number four round brush. 
and Mars black. And basically I'm just painting the outer part of the circle of the wheels. Uh, the thing with black is sometimes the black does not flow very easily. So if you want to add a teeny tiny bit of water into the black and kind of swirl it around with your brush to make it kind of flow better, you can, don't make it dripping wet, um, but that'll get your black to flow a lot easier. And just the outer part of the tire shape. Okay, next we're gonna do some outlining of our truck. Um, I guess you can say this is optional if you're not into the outlining thing, but this is a, I believe it's either a zero or a three zero uh, spotter brush. Uh, it's on my tutorial exactly what brush this is. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but we are going to use it to outline the inner part of the window. So that um, shape on the inside of the window, we're gonna use it to paint the door handle. We're going to use it to paint the outer part of the door. So I'm outlining the pretty much the entire door. Um, I call this loose outlining. It basically means that I'm not uh, making the line consistent everywhere. I'm kind of holding it loosely. My line is going to be thick and kind of vary its sort of thinness because it's um, loose. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm just using it to sort of highlight different areas of my truck, like my bed right here, outlining it. Kind of, I guess you can call it doodling almost. When you doodle, you're not making a perfect geometric drawing. You're just kind of loosely making, imp making an impression of what the drawing is. Um, so basically that's what I'm doing. Um, you can also do this same thing with a paint pen. The only thing with the paint pen is it doesn't really create the same effect, um, but it does help you with controlling it better. Uh, and then this is the exhaust. So I just added some white and black in there. Um, one more thing about outlining is um, I didn't outline every single thing on the truck. There's a lot of parts that did not get outlined, like the top of the door, um, the whole parts of the vent, the not all of the vendors got outlined, only a little bit of the hood got outlined. Um, so we're not outlining everything, just some things to make different areas of the truck kind of stand out. And you can change what you outline. You can outline different things than what I outlined. Okay. So when you are done with the outlining, we are gonna paint the middle part of the tires. So I'm gonna make that um, almost the same shade of grade that I did on the pavement, maybe a little bit darker so it stands out better. Um, so kind of a medium gray color with the four round brush. And uh, we're gonna paint that inner part of the circle. And then um, you can use the back of your brush to stamp the inner part that just the, the little circle that's on the center part of the wheel. And then we can take this a step further, clean our brush, add the white, add a little bit of highlight to the left part of the tire. I did this dry brush style, so not a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just stroking it gently. If you accidentally add way too much white, you can easily just add more black to the tire and blend it back out or just paint over it if you don't like the highlights. The next thing I'm gonna do with this painting is add shadow underneath the uh, tires and truck. Um, this is that 
a gray color, only it's a little bit darker than the pavement of the gray, obviously. Um, use the round brush, add a teeny bit more water to your brush so that it flows nicely, but we wanna do this very loosely. I'm holding my brush very lightly and it's kind of just kind of skimming the canvas a little bit, um, creating a shadow underneath the tires and um, underneath the entire truck itself so that it creates the illusion of the shadow. This is the exact same technique I did the shadow in all of my truck paintings. I think there's a shadow in all of my truck paintings. Um, I know I did it with the pumpkin painting. I don't remember, but it, it's the same technique. And then uh, we're gonna do all that fun stuff that's in the back of the truck. So it wouldn't be a summer painting with all the fun summer things in the back of the truck. We're gonna start with this umbrella. And this umbrella is a brilliant yellow green. And then I'm just using my four round brush to paint that. Um, the direction of your strokes wanna go in the direction of the shape of the umbrella. It already starts to create a little bit of texture in there because I'm painting sort of in a curved direction, like an umbrella that's closed. And then I'm gonna do my beach ball. I'm doing the beach ball solid white first to make sure that it's nice and um, def I'm defining the shape of the beach ball but also it's gonna allow my colors and I'm gonna paint on the beach ball to have better coverage than if I just painted the colors first, it wouldn't cover very well. Okay. So a nice solid titanium white base on there and then I'm gonna to have to let that dry before I go and do the other fun colors on my beach ball. And we have the surfboard. I chose yellow for the outer part of the surfboard and I did the inside red. Um, you can do different colors. You don't have to use the exact same colors that I'm using. Lots of color changing and rinsing off. Um, I use this um, drop cloth on when I'm filming and it, it helps to wipe my brush off after I rinse between colors. Um, but having a paper towel handy or I like using cloth that like a paint cloth like my drop cloth or a rag or something. It helps dry the brush much better, um, especially when you're ch changing so many colors. You want to make sure it's dry before you're loading your next color. All right, so we have our red on there and it's too wet to do any of the designs on there yet, but I'm still going to go and um, add another, a second coat of this yellow here. So the thing with yellow, it's such a see-through color. Um, if you add a tiny bit of white in there, it will help with the coverage. Okay, this umbrella needs a little bit of texture. So I added some of that hooker's green, that darker green color, just to the tip of my brush and just kind of painted these curves on the umbrella to create the texture in the umbrella. And there's that circle that's on the very top. I know my hand's in the way, but I did the circle black. And then we have, oh, I know this is going so fast. Press pause if you need to. But um, this is sand on the bottom of the pavement. This is unbleached titanium and a 12 bright brush. And basically I painted this wavy line on the bottom and filled the rest of the area in solid. So it look, looks really cool next to the pavement. You know, the truck is parked right there in the parking lot. We have the sand that happens to be on that side. Um, and of course, we're gonna paint a, an adorable little crab in this painting. Um, before we do that crab, we gotta let that sand dry, um, but we're gonna do a sun in the sky. So this sun is a combo of yellow and white because I mentioned how yellow is such a translucent color. So when you mix white in there, it is nice and solid. So using your four, number four round brush, paint a circle in the sky for the sun and just kind of really define that circle in there. I love that how it created that spiral look in the stroke. I thought that was really cool. Um, back to my spotter brush. Um, I'm gonna do the reflection in the water. 
I'll go slower for this, but this is um, just white on my brush and I'm adding very, very tiny horizontal lines way in the distance. And the idea is to have my lines get um, longer and um, kind of more spaced apart as it gets closer. That's how you create depth in your reflection. So really, really tiny, close together, dense lines way in the distance, longer, further apart lines closer to the shore essentially and I um we want most of them to be right there under the sun because that's what's creating the reflection but we know that the light source could be um spread out so and we have waves as well um, so we can do those white lines all over the water but make sure you have just an extra amount right there under the sun Okay, now that my beach ball is dry, I can go ahead and add my fun colors to it. I have a pencil and I'm gonna draw my lines in again. There's a circle kind of in the upper half part of the beach ball and I have the curved lines. This drawing is on the traceable so you can use that as the reference here. Um, but the lines are kind of curved and I'm going to paint three different colors on my beach ball. Starting with that Pyrol Red, this is the um, number four round brush. If you need to, you can use that spotter brush because it is, it's a smaller area. Um, this is Ultramarine Blue, and um, the next one will be Primary Yellow. And then if you need to, you can go back and add a second layer of white to make sure that that's nice and bright and defined and then you can also paint that circle if your um, mine wasn't dry so I painted that circle later um, but then I got my spotter brush and I outlined the inner part of my surfboard black and I painted um, the bottom part of the umbrella pole and I added a little bit more texture into my umbrella and now that my beach ball parts are dry, I used white to paint that circle. And then we're gonna paint that fun crab. So let's talk about that crab here. Um, it did jump a little bit here, but I used my um, number four round brush and the Pyrol Red to paint an oval that's sort of going horizontal. Okay, and then um, using that to sort of uh, redefine that oval here a little bit. I know my hand is in a bad position here. So just an oval. And then we can get our spotter brush because these legs are really tiny and that round brush is not gonna do the trick. But I did three lines for the leg. There we go. So um, three lines on the other side. Okay, and then we have the um, the claws of the crab. So we have one line going diagonal upwards and this one diagonal. And then the claw is kind of like an upside down C or not an upside down C, like, like the letter U. I'll move my hand here. So like kind of like a thick letter U and same with on this side. Okay, and then um, for the eyes, I did two uh, kind of more vertical lines for the for the eyes, and then using my brush to sort of just redefine those claw hands. Kind of mad at myself for not getting you a different camera angle for this step, but it's really simple. Okay, and then. For the eyes, I'm going to do um, white for the eyes. So rinse your brush off and load it with the white. And paint two circles for the eyes.
and then we can do two black dots on the inside of those circles. And then we can do black for the mouth. Okay, so there is our adorable little crab and um, the crab is probably my favorite part of the painting. I also did a highlight on the, the circle part of the umbrella. So um, we're just gonna do some more details in this painting. We're almost finished, but it's all about the details, right? And so I'm gonna decorate my surfboard next. And this was really fun. I chose flowers. Uh, I think my, yeah, my original one that I did, this is the second one I'm doing of the beach, the summer truck. I did sort of different kind of surfer looking designs, but th these are gonna be flowers. So I'm just doing basic white uh, five petal flowers. And I turned them into sort of hibiscus looking flowers here. So I did white for the base. And then I did that little middle part of the hibiscus flower that sort of, that sticks out. And so a line and some little dots at the edge of the line. And then I went back, um, you might need to wait for that white to dry for this to work, but I went back with the red and just added uh, the middle part, sort of a starburst sort of for, um, design on the middle part to make it look like that middle part of the hibiscus is darker. So that was my hibiscus design of the surfboard. Um, it, kind of fun if you google different surfboard designs you can find out different ways you can design your surfboard um, sort of fun detail and the last thing i'm going to do to this painting is i'm going to add some more color in my bushes i wanted to brighten them up a little bit more um, optional if you don't want to do this so i have my q-tip bundle and that light green permanent and i'm just adding some more texture some lighter green in there obviously i don't want to cover all of that dark green but just enough to sort of brighten it up a little bit fun summer looking um, lush bushes that are by the ocean and then if you want, you could even paint um, little hibiscus flowers on the on the bushes if you wanna keep adding more details to this. There's a lot of details in these truck paintings, but they're a lot of fun. I really enjoyed painting. Um, finally have a truck for each of the seasons. I have a summer one, a fall, winter, spring, Valentine's one. Um, I don't have an Easter one yet, so maybe you'll see an Easter one next year or a, um, uh, St. Patrick's Day one. So sign your name, show it off. You are finished with your summer truck painting. I hope that you enjoyed painting this with me too. Thanks for watching.